you know, regardless of that face, he must be the goodest good boy on Namek, because I'm sure Santa would have given him a gift or two. What's up everybody, Stepdads here, and welcome to another edition of Dragon Ball Days, and Merry Christmas everybody! I hope you've been going through the 12 days of Krampus, and don't worry, I know I'm falling behind on them, but honestly, they don't take a whole lot to do. So I should be caught up within the next three days, considering I have today, tomorrow, and the next day off. Thank God. However, today, we will be looking at a what if that had a surprising number of votes because of five different ways that the story could progress. Thank you all who voted, because of all of you, it was decided that Goku would come to back up the Z Fighters, with the second place option being Nail. You know, being Nail. For those of you that voted Nail, be thankful that I have a contingency plan, because I want a majority of your votes for every vote I do on my what ifs. No matter how you dice it, 50% is 50% in this case. I want a majority, so I'm going to use the top two. Not only are we going to see the Z Warriors trying to last long enough so that Goku can arrive, but we are also going to get Nail. But first, the recap. In the last part, we witnessed the Z Fighters attack Frieza's troops with Vegeta, Broly, and Paragus all heading the front, while Gohan and Krillin snuck the Dragon Balls out from under the Emperor's nose. During this battle, though they were able to kill Raccoon and Goldo, Ginyu quickly would tap into this and was able to perform a body swap between him and their strongest fighter. Now, Broly is behind bars and Ginyu is parading about in the legendary Super Saiyan's body without realizing he's in the legendary Super Saiyan's body and trying to beat the foes that have so suddenly delivered themselves to Lord Frieza. Let's go ahead and continue this Christmas what if because Dragon Ball Day just so happened to have landed on Christmas. This is what if Broly landed on Namek. Both Paragus and Vegeta are enough to at least hold off this Broly Ginyu because of the Zenkai boosts they've gotten from earlier. However, once Birder and Jace join in, that's when things start going south. But suddenly, a destructive wave is launched from off screen. It's Nail, there to back them up and be able to actually get them out because he doesn't understand how the key has changed, but he will soon. Vegeta and Paragus are forced to retreat with Nail, causing Broly to be captured, you know, in Ginyu's body. Instead of killing him outright, Frieza understands that Saiyans are trash and his captain should not be a Saiyan. So that's why Frieza decides to just capture the old body of Ginyu, so that once everything's said and done, Ginyu can have his body back, and Frieza can kill a Saiyan. Thanks to suppressing their power, the remainder of the Ginyu Force can't easily find our heroes, and reluctantly, Vegeta agrees with everyone else, they're gonna need Kakarot. While this does seem like the safe decision, there are consequences for it. Because they have to lay low, unfortunately, some Namekians are found. Most of them are killed. Others are just captured. Frieza has to know about the Dragon Balls one way or the other. And thanks to the skirmish, he doesn't even know that they're stolen. By this point, Vegeta and Paragus would be a little bit on edge because of all this sitting around doing nothing. Krillin, however, comes up with a solution. Mind training. Much like he and Gohan did on the ship on the way to Namek, Paragus and Vegeta could benefit from this. And so, they do end up sparring in these mind training sessions very often. As a matter of fact, Bulma has to get on their case several times just so the Saiyans eat something. It would be several Earth days before the group was assailed by the remnants of the Ginyu Force. 
Now, Paragus would not dare go to the Great Ape transformation here, because that would alert Frieza, and Frieza would be like, okay, that's where they are. I'm going to be sure the monkeys are dead. Because the only thing that pisses Frieza off more than a monkey are several monkey men. The Saiyans and Krillin have to just try their best to survive, and thanks to their numbers versus Birder and Jace, they're able to do just that. Ginyu is around, sure, but he's being sure that his men can handle it. There's no way Vegeta and Paragus could have gotten that much stronger. And the Z Crew do fare a bit better, but ultimately, they are defeated by the trio. And if it wasn't for Goku arriving just in the nick of time, Gohan would have taken a crusher ball to the face. Goku arrives on the scene just in time, deflects the attack, which alerts Ginyu that this guy might be a bit stronger than the other one. Nobody just shakes off one of Jace's crusher balls. However, Goku's just confused trying to read the key of this guy. It, it seems like it's all over the place, just disorganized and completely unsensible. It's just not working out for him, whatever is happening. My dad's here. Goku, your son, he's told me of your talents. He's told me that you're a very great warrior from the planet Earth. I must tell you of my son. That is not him. My son's body was taken by the warrior that you now face. Huh. So that's why this guy looks weird. And feels weird. Goku, whatever you do, please don't kill my boy. I know that's not him, but I want to see him in that body again. He's my only child. The last of our race is all here on Namek now. Don't worry, old guy. I understand. I won't go too hard on him. <laughs> You really think that empty threat's going to get you anywhere? You're all filthy Saiyans at the end of the day, and Lord Frieza will be more than happy when I drag your bodies back to the ship. Goku's 90,000 is much more than what he needed at first, because Ginyu can only access 65,000 of Broly's power, as opposed to the 150,000 that we discussed in a previous part. Eventually, Goku has to use Kaioken to subdue Ginyu, because Ginyu figures out that his body gains power as he gets angry. However, he can't access the full power like he could with his original body, and Goku makes this painfully obvious to him, causing Ginyu and Birder and Jace to retreat. Ginyu needs to approach this guy with his body, not some dirty Saiyans. Goku regroups with the Z crew, hands out sensu beans, everything's fine. And then they summon Parunga. They begin by wishing Piccolo back and HOLD ON STEP DAY! Nail and Paragus speak Namekian. Oh. Okay. I'll just I'll be over here. Yeah, sit down. In fact, thanks to Krillin, they end up wasting a wish, and Paragus has to now say to send Piccolo back where he came from, because if he dies here, there's no way for them to use their Dragon Balls to revive everyone killed by Frieza and his men. Meanwhile, Ginyu mortally wounds Broly's body and switches back with him, allowing him to be at the peak strength he always knew he could muster. Ginyu decides bleeding out would be a proper fate for the monkey, and they don't realize that some of the Namekians that they captured can heal people. Yeah, Broly's healed. However, before Broly breaks out of the ship, he wants to be sure that Frieza is as far away as possible. So, he comes up with a plan with some of the other Namekians in order to admit that Guru is needed to use the dragons. However, they word it that only Guru can summon the dragon. At this point, Frieza still hasn't realized that the Dragon Balls are gone. He just hasn't looked for them. He's so confident about it that he gets into his hover car and heads off to Guru's. 
This is what Broly has been waiting for. He blows a hole in the ship, kills a few guards on the way, and frees all the Namekians while heading himself to Paragus immediately. However, if he thinks it's gonna be that easy, he's got another thing coming, because the Ginyu Force are hot on his trail. Broly and Paragus get their little moment where they hug it out, they missed each other, and then the Ginyu Force promptly arrives. After introductions, the battle ensues, only this time we know about the body swap technique, and it's not going to be efficient here. Captain Ginyu is taken out by Goku, Paragus and Broly take out Jason Burter, and Vegeta just ends all of their lives. By this point, Goku gets into an argument with Vegeta. They were down, they were out, they didn't need to be killed. That whole argument ensues. All the while, Nail has just met Frieza and is heading to the sacred battleground that Namek has in order to fight him. Towards the end of Goku and Vegeta's bickering back and forth, Vegeta gets off his legendary Super Saiyan spiel and has no doubt that this young man is that legendary Super Saiyan that Frieza oh so feared. And that is why we must see this to the end, Kakarot! For our race, for our ancestors, we must make this tyrant pay for his genocide of our entire civilization. As much as it pains me to say it, Frieza will die by this boy's hand, as opposed to my own. Goku pauses, unaware really of the right answer. He just wants to leave and go to Earth at this point, but the Saiyan in him is wanting to stay and follow along with what Vegeta said. He decides to ask Krillin and Gohan about this. Krillin opts out of the fight, saying that Earth got what it needed. But then again, who's to say that Frieza doesn't come to Earth one day and want to destroy it like it's like he's done to Namek? Gohan also wants to go home, but he's not leaving without his dad. So if this is something that his dad feels like he needs to do, Gohan supports it, but he's not going anywhere. He's staying on this planet till it's done. Goku takes some time to really, really think this over. Then he turns to the group of Saiyans and nods. All right, I'm with you. We gotta stop this guy now. But Gohan, Krillin, go find Bulma and go get my ship. If this Frieza guy is as powerful as they say, then, well, I don't want you two caught in the crossfire. This is our fight. Naturally, the two leave, trusting Goku, and Gohan just tells him to come back safe this time. Sure enough, the Saiyans take over Frieza's ship and wait outside for the Tyrant while hatching a plan. They decide that the first fighter should be Paragus, followed by Goku, followed by Vegeta, and then Broly. Broly needs to be last because he is the legendary Super Saiyan, and Vegeta doubts that he could keep the Ozaru form running for very long. He's gotta be sure he's at tip-top shape when he's gonna fight Frieza. Naturally, the three Saiyans are just having a really hard time of it. Goku didn't get much of a Zenkai boost from fighting the Ginyu Force. Kaioken's keeping him in the fight, and Paragus, even with his Zenkai boosts, it's not a whole lot because of his age. Vegeta is really the only one that can stand up to second form Frieza, but once the third form comes out, Vegeta's in quite a bit of a pickle. If Paragus is wounded, Broly would have more of a motivation to fight Frieza. And so, Paragus launches a power ball and fights Frieza in his grade 8 form, just trying to do as much damage as possible. However, Paragus is beaten down and the power ball dissipates letting Paragus shrink back to normal. Broly hops in before Frieza kills his dad. By now, Broly's seen enough bloodshed, he's able to really harness that rage and awaken the Ozaru inside his soul. With 12 million, Broly would be trumping the third form Frieza, not a doubt in my mind. And this power level comes from the several Zenkai boosts the body has been under. However, Frieza would still achieve his final form, causing Broly to be outmatched. Vegeta, Paragus, and Goku have to think of a plan 
quickly. Even though Broly can get angrier and angrier and angrier, he can't get angry quick. He's already pumping out the Ozaru form. He doesn't have a whole lot more to go on. It's then that Goku comes up with the idea, the spirit bomb, but he's gonna need Vegeta and Paragus to hop in and extend how much time Broly has out on the field. Just like in the anime, Goku charges up a big spirit bomb and Frieza is the recipient of this huge package. However, just like in the anime, Frieza survives and unfortunately, there's only one person that can save Goku here, and actually wants to save Goku here, Paragus. While Broly would have wanted to, Paragus is the first one to see Frieza, kind of like how Krillin was, but he reacts to Frieza's death beam and knocks Goku out of the way, taking it to his chest. This sets Broly off and awakens the legendary Super Saiyan for everybody to see. The battle ensues like it did in the canon, up until Frieza throws the death ball at Namek. The thing is, Broly has an affinity for Namek. He doesn't want Namek to be destroyed more than it already has. So, with his amazing speed, he gets between the planet and the death ball and chucks it back at Frieza. Goku and Vegeta grab Paragus' body and take him back to the ship where all the powers have convened. Here, the battle would play out similarly to Super Saiyan Goku versus Frieza. The main difference is when Frieza launches the Death Ball, Broly's quick enough to get between the planet and Frieza and launch it back at him. Everything else from here is pretty cut and dry. Frieza's defeated by Broly, Namek's preserved, and the Namekian Dragon Balls are remade with the Elder Mori. While they still needed the Earth's Dragon Balls in order to revive everyone, their end of the bargain isn't complete yet. When Mori is back to life, he makes the new set of Dragon Balls and takes them to Earth with them. Here, Broly and Paragus can be on Earth for a while, and Broly seems to like it being around everyone. And heck, the blue sky is a lot prettier than a green sky. However, it's still not home for the legendary Super Saiyan, but everything still happens just like in the anime. However, they have two wishes. Because Goku didn't need to be teleported from Yardrat to Earth, and that failed, they can hold on to that wish. Plus, Krillin didn't die here. And so, the father and son teleport everyone back to Namek. Parunga waits patiently for their last wish to be said. And then Paragus looks at his son, because through this entire experience, he realizes that his son has grown up to be one very wonderful young man. Broly, I've learned a lot from them. They've done a lot for our planet. They helped avenge our race. I cannot make you be what you are not, son. If you wish to be with them, I will respect your wish, my son. So, does Broly stay on Namek, or does he choose to go with the Earth crew? You tell me by voting in that poll above. Do you think Broly added some nuance to the DBZ formula, or do you think that Maybe Broly's a little too powerful. I'm sure that'll reflect in the vote if you decide to keep him on Namek or send him to Earth. However, this next part is, again, up to all of you. For more what-ifs in the realm of video gaming and Dragon Ball alike, such as if Majin Vegeta became Emperor Vegeta, just like in this timeline with this Vegeta, what, you thought I forgot about Vegeta? No, he's the new Emperor. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, like the video if you enjoyed it, and as always, I'll see you in the next one. Ciao!